Today, we're going to take a closer look at the new Schmincke Super Granulating Shire watercolor set. We'll do some swatches and I'll do a little Hobbit home painting because obviously, and I'll share my thoughts about these beautiful nostalgic colors. The second I saw this palette, I had to have it. I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fanatic, so the name Shire kindles excitement in my DNA. I want to take a quick moment and thank everyone who has ever bought anything from my Jackson's Art affiliate links, because you're the reason I could afford to buy these beautiful colors. So as an early birthday present to myself, I used my affiliate money to purchase a huge selection of the Schmincke Super Granulating Watercolors all of which we will look at in detail in the future, but today it's all about the Shire. Inspired by the green rolling hills of England where Tolkien grew up, the Shire was a special place full of happy folk living a simple, happy life. Hobbits live in harmony with nature, and that is reflected in this palette. With mainly green and brown undertones, this palette immediately sends me into a daydream of dirt paths through lush gardens, hand-carved wooden tables holding old jars of all sorts of botanical secrets. The softness of these colors is conducive to storybook illustrations. Nothing is too harsh or too vibrant. It's just right. The super granulating colors are made up of multiple pigments, so many of them dry with a duotone effect, where you can see separate colors settling into the grooves of the paper. But of course, the heavy granulation is the showstopper, leaving an intensely rugged texture, which is perfect for landscapes. Since this is my first set of super granulating colors by Schmincke, I wasn't quite sure what to expect because my only experience with heavily granulating pigments are from the Daniel Smith Primatech line, of which I have a few. These, however, are far more granulating and leave much more dramatic effects on the paper. Oh, and by the way, this is the Arches Cold Press watercolor paper, and for the Hobbit Home painting, I'll be using my Etcher Everyday Cold Press sketchbook, which I think really helps emphasize this granulation effect. I don't think the duotone effect is as prominent in the Shire line, however I haven't fully tested them yet in various applications, for instance adding salt or using extremely diluted pigment next to heavy pigment. Those are the tests that will reveal how much the pigments separate when they dry, which I'm looking forward to in the future. However, you can see evidence of this separation in the pans immediately after painting. Let's give it a little spritz. First things first, we should probably do a hobbit door. It's fun to play with the design. I sometimes, when I do this, I like to imagine what I would, like how I would build mine. A little circular window over here, or maybe it's like a half moon. So pretty much all of these colors have green in them, it seems. Maybe not the yellow. The yellow is more of a brownish yellow but uh, they just have that kind of green undertone. Even the blue is very much a blue green, but we'll do our best. So I'll start with some blue green in the sky. Basically, I'm gonna use the blue green as like my shadow color. Um, and I'll also touch in a bit of the, the gray. And straight away, I'm gonna start with the highlight color of my green, which is going to be the green, not the olive. But I'm just going to add a bit of that to the tops so that they kind of fade off into the sky. So I don't really have a um, red in this palette, this the Shire selection. So I, 
In order to make the brick and the wooden table stand out from the rest of it, I'm going to use a mixture of like the gray and the uh, yellow, I believe. Maybe that'll be a little bit more brown. This is one of the challenges when you're working with a very limited palette, especially when the colors are uh, quite similar, like they're all in the same family. This one particularly is very green. This family is very green. <laughs> Need to wait for this to dry a little bit more because I'm just going to end up with all really soft edges. It does take a fair bit of um, water and kind of digging at the paint in order to reactivate it and get it to flow smoothly. But once you do that, it flows nicely. So just keep that in mind. You need to re-wet the paint um, like far ahead, far in advance before you're, you begin painting. Especially if you want to do like larger washes <laughs> because you need more paint with that. The blue can get pretty dark actually. Um, I haven't tested it to see like which one of them is the can get the darkest value, but it's either the blue or the gray. Add some weathering to the door. I think I'm going to really enjoy this palette, uh, like the whole palette together, all the granulating colors, not just the colors from the Shire even though they're beautiful, like having some reds and pinks and purple options, that's going to be really fun. I think it's going to, I think all the colors I chose will like really complement each other nicely. Let's do some stone. So I'm just using the gray, like really watered down now. I think their goal in making this palette was to just offer earthy green options, obviously, but because of that, because there's no added pinks or purples or reds, you're forced to stick within this very limited spectrum. That in itself is very illustrative. Like if you look at a lot of old illustrations, storybook illustrations, sometimes you find these color palettes where they're all within the same family and they don't have like every color in the spectrum involved. <laughs> so it's to me, it has that it already has that storybook feel. So this this automatic it's like a fantasy, you know, um, it gives me it gives it more of that fantasy quality. As I do this, I'm kind of thinking like, are there any that I would consider adding to my main palette? Uh, because I do actually have a Prima uh, Daniel Smith Prima Tech Diopside Genuine, one of the Prima Tech colors, heavily granulating, and I love it. I add it to a lot of my mixes because of the granulation. <laughs> and so with these, obviously, that's kind of the point. They're very strongly granulating, and I love that quality, especially for seascapes um, or stonework or brickwork, which you can kind of see here. Once you once you figure out like which colors you want to use as your highlights w versus shadows and you start to play within that spectrum, then the color is irrelevant in the illustration. So if you're only using the Shire colors because you don't have any pinks or reds or whatever, you can't deviate from this look, <laughs> this very soft, earthy look which I think is a fun challenge and it's all relative, right? So if you make one thing a little bit darker, it can only look dark if something light is next to it. That's where the challenge comes in. Oh, I love dry brush textures on this paper. It's extra fun because it's just so strong. <laughs> I would love a very um, like terracotta red color for this little pot right here, but I don't have that in this set. 
I could cheat and I could use it from from one of the other sets I bought, but trying to stick with just the Shire here. So in order to make that stand out, I have to make this kind of recede into the distance back here. If I want to make the table come forward, I need to darken the area around it a little bit. So this could be a really fun set to take out uh, on our painting. On one hand, sometimes it's nice to have a very limited palette when you're outside because it just takes away some of the what ifs basically. So like you're forced to work with these colors. What's your highlight? What's your shadow? Go. You don't have to sit there worrying, oh, did I choose the right color for this or that? Like it's, it's, it's a more of a straightforward process. If I had a bright blue, I would add it right now to the sky up here. I do love how it looks when it's layered. When it's not layered, you see more of the um, granulation showing through. When it's layered, it still has that granulation, but it's just a different effect. It's um, it's kind of overlapping, so less of the paper texture showing through. So yeah, it's fun to play with that. I hope you enjoyed seeing these colors up close and getting a better feel for them as much as I enjoyed painting with them. I'm really excited to see how these will mix and play with the other granulating colors I bought, so stay tuned for more videos about that in the future. So for now, I will say goodbye, but I'll see you again soon. Take care.